Okay, welcome to lesson six, the battery technique. This is one of my absolute favorites because this is something that I developed uh, and it was something I didn't even realize I'd been doing basically my whole life, but I put it into a framework and I was able to use it. I even used it again myself when I actually formalized the practice and came to some serious realizations, which I'll tell you about once we get there. So the battery technique. So as I mentioned, it's a framework to look at your mind state and basically turn it around. You choose how you feel is the idea. You can look at your thoughts and then determine from there where you want them to go if you so choose to do that. This is a tool or kind of an exercise that gives you a way to stay on track of digging through your mind to see what is there. So meditation is one way to do it, but that's kind of an open way and that's a very formalized way, but this is a way to put it kind of in your physical hands and it, and it gives you kind of instructions on how to do it. What you do is you bring your thoughts up to the awareness level and you can evaluate them in a metacognitive way where you're able to look upon your thoughts and see what they're, see what you are thinking. So it's like, as I said, what I've been doing for decades, I just didn't realize it. And here is kind of how I think once I track back my mind, how I first learned it. It was something so simple, but sometimes the most profound things can be, right? This is the magnet that we had uh, on my refrigerator back when I lived you know, in high school with my parents. And I would look at this and I would think, how fun is this? I get to choose how I feel today. And, and that's somehow doing this every day. I realized that I got to choose. I get to decide. And what I would do every time I lifted that today, I feel I would kind of check in with myself and be like, you know what? Today I want to feel ecstatic. Why would you not want to feel ecstatic every single day? So I made that choice a long time ago and I didn't realize I've been making that choice every day since. So to get into this lesson a bit more, what we're going to do is that it is a way to objectively look at your thoughts by naming their character and then deciding what mind state you're in. It works by creating that framework for metacognition so you can be aware of your thinking and how to change those thinking patterns. We'll practice. So you want to have a pen handy. I've got this one here. It doesn't have, it can be black. That's fine. And then I'll give you an example of how I use this and realize that I needed to share it with everybody. Here's a quote, the mind is everything. What you think you become. Buddha said this and he's apparently a big deal. So what is the battery technique? It is an exercise to ground your thoughts in a framework. So how does it work? The goal basically is to be charged as much as possible. And I'll get into that in a minute. What I want to focus on here is that it is okay to be in a negative mind state. It is okay to be in a positive mind state. What you want to do though, is when you're in those negative and positive mind states is that you can sometimes be very unaware of your mind state. And what this does is it gives you that awareness. You don't want to be stuck in unawareness for too long. It can just continue and continue. And you wonder why you're in this stress cycle. So here's some science that I found that, that I think that, um, is applicable to the battery technique. So Dr. Sean Aker is Harvard, I think, who studies happiness. And he has noticed that only 10% of your happiness is based on the external world and your circumstances, whether I have a nice house, whether I have a job, etc. 90% of your happiness is based on how your brain processes the world. So what happens in here? Not about what's actually happening. There are homeless people in India who have a tarp for their door and they are the, they will they rate higher in happiness scores than many Americans. What this means is that you change the way you perceive the world. And what that does is it raises success in your entire life with your family, with your relationships is how you perceive the world. That's 90%. Another research study that I found is Dr. Seligman, Martin Seligman, he teamed up with MetLife and he found that optimistic salespeople, the ones who had those positive mind states, were able to outsell their pessimistic counterparts by 56%. So having a positive mental mind state that was optimistic or happy or positive actually gives you a edge at work. It increases your productivity. Another one is Dr. Richard Davidson. He's at the University of Wisconsin. He's a great big uh, uh, guy in meditation and, and that whole world. He has noticed that um, mindfulness training activates the left prefrontal, prefrontal cortex, which is associated with positive symptoms. This causes a tilt or a left tilt in the brains that they've seen on brain scans. 
These left tail subjects report skyrocketing happiness levels and it correlates to fMRI studies and this change can be as achieved in as little as eight weeks of mindfulness training. And this is a mindfulness training exercise, kind of a little bit, maybe make mindfulness. I'll let them judge me on that. But this is a mindful state where you're able to be aware of your thoughts. And what this shows by Dr. Richard Davidson's research is that positivity is trainable through mindfulness. And that is where the battery idea comes in here. So as I mentioned, all you need is a pen and it's okay to be negative. It's okay to be positive. Here's where I want to talk about the charging. This is charging when you have the pen in both hands. This is the goal. Okay. So here, let's get started. So what you're going to do is take the pen and on my left hand, just however you choose, I'm going to put a negative on my left hand, just draw it there. And then on the positive, I'll do my best because I am right-handed positive. Okay. So I've got my positive and I've got my negative. Okay. So what you're going to do is this is how you start to become an active participant in your own problem solving process. So you hold the pen with both hands, kind of like in the picture here. What is the general environment of your mind right now? Look around the room and really dig down to see what thoughts are in there. Are they positive? Are they, is it generally negative, generally positive? If it was a color, kind of what's your vision colored? Are you in a good mood? Are you in a bad mood? Are your thoughts critical? Are they inspired? Okay, in my case, I'm in a pretty good mood. So I'm gonna put the pen in my right positive hand. Now you just take a few breaths. Okay, I'm in a pretty good mood, okay? Now look around again. Put the pen back in your hands. Really look at your thoughts now. I'm still in a good mood. I'm in a, I, I went for a run today, okay? <laughs> I'm at home, it's my day off. I'm, I'm filming this, I'm in a good mood. So this is what the goal is, is I could live out here being positive all the time, but I'm not aware of it. My two-year-old with an ice cream cone is living in positive happy land all the time. Is she aware of it? No. Tomorrow, she won't be able to savor that memory as easily. And what we want to be able to do is be aware, be aware of your mind state. So what you also want to do is if you are feeling negative, put it in the negative hand. Nobody's judging you on this. Nobody's watching you. This is your mind state and there is no right or wrong here. I could be in a terrible mood, right? I could be like, well, literally, honestly, today, my refrigerator door fell off and, and things crashed to the ground. The syrup fell on the ground and that was really stressful. And thinking back to that, that now, yeah, my hand is in a negative mind state. That sucked. <laughs> but then I go back here. Okay. I can laugh about that now. That's good. It sucked at the time. It sucked at the time. Re remembering back to that moment, my husband was on his way to work. The kids were screaming. That sucked. Um, yeah, I had kind of been jolted out of bed. Yeah, that didn't, that was not fun. That's okay. It's okay to be negative about your refrigerator door literally falling off. I mean, that's fine. Um, but then I go back and think about it like, okay, that was not fun. But if I want to get out of that bad memory, what can I do to put the pen in the other hand? Uh, I then went for a run. Well, I meditated and then I went for a run and that made me feel a lot better. So that is how you can kind of go back and forth. So say you're like, well, I'm in a good mood now, but I kind of want to practice this. Like what do I want to remember about being negative? So again, let's practice one more time. Where are you at? Put it in the appropriate hand. If it's negative, do you want it to stay there? Sometimes you need to respect negative mind state. Sometimes something really bad has happened to you. That's okay. It's okay to be like, I'm not okay. I'm not, I'm still not okay. I don't even want, I'm so not okay. I don't even want to think positive right now. That's okay. That's okay. That's not the goal. The goal is to be aware of it. That's the goal. Okay. With that, you can create that awareness and change your mind state if you so choose. Sometimes that negative mind state, you just need to sit in there for a little bit. 
but you now have that mind state of that metacognition to look at it and when you're ready to do something about it you can shift your mind state of like well that thing really really sucked and that thing was really not fun and i wish that thing had never had happened but i'm ready to move on and i'm going to do that by thinking about something and i'm going to see if i really feel it and then i'm going to move it to the other hand that's how you do it okay what if you're doing this and you're like no i don't know what i'm feeling i'm i can't do this i'm stuck what you want to do is dig into that real life battery of your body and i know that sounds funny but it's actually true every cell in your body has an action potential across its membrane so add this up over the millions of cells and the power there's that power in you that generates all that heat that generates all that strength that generates all of that ability to, to walk across the room and and you know warm up to, to warm up your iced drink um that's that's all power that's all because your body is literally scientifically a battery i mean just watch the matrix they go through it in that movie your heartbeat is literally an electric current coursing through a muscle and everything depolarizes and it, it basically also if you think about it so your muscle depolarizes and that creates movement of your blood and then in your brain every every neuron firing is a synaptic transmission of chemicals and then depolarizing currents or changing that uh, uh the polarity the positive negative over a membrane from neuron to neuron so you literally are a battery what you want to do is pay attention to this pay attention to your body are my shoulders struggled struggled up a am i actually stressed out but my brain is thinking i'm fine i'm like well no actually my stomach is knots and um maybe i am a little stressed out and and not in a good way so what you want to think of like is what kind of charge is happening with your literal body is your body like tensed up and all kind of in a negative you know negative stress state or is it in a relaxed more positive state where you're kind of in an energetic you know more more flow state if you can get there um so remember like are you holding your breath are you frowning if you can name how your body's doing it name it and then go back to your thoughts and then try seeing am i positive am i negative and then being aware of it okay so now i'm going to go through how this works in the emergency room i had a patient who was suicidal and had add and in that suicidal thoughts a lot of times what happens is that when the negativity gets to emergency levels a lot of maladaptive cognition is happening so what you want to do is replace those negative thoughts when they get to that level with something like an activity to pass the pen back and forth which helps with some of that grounding that physical tactile somatic sensation so what did i do for the guy so basically he i gave him the pen and i had him go through this technique and i guided him through this he was talking about some negative things quickly quickly really caught on to the concept of that this is the goal he was staying on this you know negative negative noted negative noted negative and i said how can you get it to the other hand just how can you get it to the other hand it's a simple question and he could choose whether you want it he, he he was able to choose whether he wanted to go negative or positive but he sat here he thought about it and he said well because of this i've been able to see my family more because of, of the way because of his circumstances i was able to see my family more and that led to a sudden like that just that one positive thought that one metacognitive way to change that thought pattern it let loose a floodgate of suddenly like oh my gosh i never realized that i never thought of it in a positive way i never thought my circumstances were anything but negative and now i realize suddenly this good thing came of it because i made him go through this exercise and it was really amazing to see and uh it worked out really really well and as i said it gave me the feeling that i needed to share this more because of the the powerful effects i saw within just minutes so what this can do also with the pen is that at first it can almost feel like a distraction from those mental stress cycle really going around and then because it's like wait positive negative but what it can do is when those, in those episodes of high stress it can help you by going through this framework and this technique you can achieve a little bit of that emotional regulation and and can actually increase your stress tolerance by helping you get through a tough situation so you're in a tough situation then you can do this what happens is with this you can see those fleeting thoughts that are like negative 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 when you're kind of stuck here and you can see those things easier as you try to name it so another example of this that i just want to share really quickly is 
I did this in my house. And what I didn't realize is how much I was negative in my house, how much I would walk into my living room and be upset uh, by the, the mess in the living room or, or something that was out of place. And I didn't realize that in my own home, how upset I was. And I was, I amazed myself as I did this in a more formalized way. And then I went through each room to room and suddenly recognized why am I being so negative in my own house? And that led to a big change that uh, has helped me to this day. And even now, when I, every day that I walk into a messy house, it's a, a technique that I could do really quickly, even with or without a pen, whatever you're holding, if you have your phone, you can just move it hand to hand. And once you get used to like, well, I'm gonna designate this one negative and designate this one positive. Okay. So lesson six, battery technique, just to summarize what it is, it's a framework to see your thoughts. How it works is that it brings awareness to your mind state changes and your, gives you that ability to see your thoughts clearly. And then we went through some practice techniques where it gave you this moment of presence and of noting and being able to change what you want to change. And then I gave you an example. So sometimes you may notice you've overlooked something, both in the emergency room and then uh, with my patient, or even when I'm at home and I'm noticing how upset I am about my messy house. And, and then I'm able to change that into a positive, like, well, I have a, a messy house. My kids have all these toys to play with. Isn't that wonderful? All right, that's it for module two. Okay, grab these supplies if you haven't already. Uh, step one, be sure you've completed the roadmap uh, pages for each lesson. Step two, same thing for the, the, the workbook. Step three, practice and revisit your goals and track your progress to give you that motivation to continue. Next step, you're going to take any questions that you have from the course and bring them to the community or the question and answer. Okay, step two, keep doing journaling, celebrate any aha moments with your friends or even on the online group. I would love to cheer you on. Step three, keep practicing to multiply your returns and build on everything so that you can multiply your success um, and multiply that uh, investment that you've made on your time. So uh, then again, okay, to break it down, make sure you've watched all the videos and done the roadmap. You wanna build your skills further with the workbook and then practice, practice, practice. As a bonus, remember to accept that progress is progress. Even a small step means you've gone forward. And uh, no matter how small that step is, even a little misstep can be a way to learn a lesson. And then every small success is building that foundation to help you move forward. What you don't want to do is become a victim of your circumstances or have that victim mindset. You uh, don't want to take on that idea that you are not in control because the thing is you are in control. You want to see past and think past your previous mental blocks to transform yourself moment by moment, whether it is five seconds at a time, whether it is like a pen battery charging moment at a time. Okay, awesome. So now you know the techniques for the yellow zone stress area and can more easily calm down that sympathetic response and get that autonomic nervous system back in better balance. Okay, so what we went through was all of these. Bravo, you completed all of these. Okay, leave any comments on the videos below. Um, and then life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Albert Einstein said that, he's a pretty smart guy. Okay, inside the next module, we are gonna go through uh, the orange zone. Gonna start with mirror meditation, how to face your worst critic with loving kindness. Lesson two, hot shower, how to stimulate that relaxation response with chemoreceptors and also that thermoreceptor of warmth. Cold showers, don't knock it till you've tried it. <laughs> how to fast track measurable benefits without any skill in literally less than 30, sec well, 30 seconds, is it proven? Lesson four, thumb squeeze is how to layer in focusing techniques without getting distracted. This is how to make your mind juggle a little bit more if you're an overthinker. Lesson five is here and now, how to live in the present without hijacking them, without stress hijacking the moment. Okay, if you still have any questions, let me know. Thanks for joining. If you wanna do any coaching, just shoot me an email and look to the Facebook group program for any monthly Q and A's. All right, thank you so much and we'll see you in the next module. Download the course materials at stressrelieffsurvivalguide.com.